Hey guys, this is Alex Pierce from LightSailVR.com. When you first open Octane Standalone, it looks something like this. I'm going to show you how to quickly just set up a bunch of nodes, and then over the course of the next few videos, I'll explain more about what each one does. But I think it's important that we have a starting point before we start talking about how to navigate and what the viewport is and what the outliner is. First thing I'm going to do is right click and then select render target. I'm going to click on the render target which starts rendering in the viewport. And now I'm going to add a few things. If I press space, I can add a camera. Usually it's going to be a thin lens camera. And if I drag this down here, you can see it automatically snaps to the position here. You'll notice that the render target already has solid dots for many of these, and there are a few that don't have solid dots. That means that there actually is already a camera attached to this, otherwise we wouldn't see anything in the viewport. And if you hover over these output pins, you can see what each one is. So right now there's not a visible environment and there's no geometry, but all these other ones are already here. So if you click on the render target over here, you can see all these things. So for instance, the camera, there's already a thin lens camera attached and you can actually change the settings already, or you can override it by just dragging a new camera on top. Space, search for daylight, environment. We're going to connect it here. Make sure you go to the environment, not the visible environment. So now you can see we have an environment. And then let's go ahead and add some geometry. So if you press space and search for primitive, you'll get this geometric primitive. And we can click that into our geometry node. And now you can see we have a cube. Let's add one more primitive, space primitive. And we'll go ahead and change that to a plane by coming up here and changing it to plane. And now if we click this into geometry, you can see our cube disappears. So what we have to do is press space and look for geo group. And now we can connect both of these and have both the cube and the plane. If I press O, I can select the object. And this button to move it up, just so I can see where it's at. We'll talk about that more in detail later. Now let's go ahead and add two materials. So if I press space, search for universal material, drag this over to the primitive, copy and paste. For the plane, let's go ahead and up the roughness here so it's not so reflective. Let's turn down the specular for now. And for the cube, let's just choose, let's just go with red so we can see it a little better. I'm going to go back over to the plane. Let's make this a little bit darker. And I think I'm just going to bring the specular pretty far down, just so we can see what we're working with. Lastly, I'm going to click on these objects and give them some names. If you click on the node, you click up here, you can change the name. So I'll call this cube one. This is already called plane. That's fine. We'll call this material universal material red. We'll call this one Universal Material Gray. That way we can just sort of see what's going on here. Now that we have this basic scene set up, we can go up to File, Save as Default. And then now when you open a new project, it will start with this. All you have to do is click on Render Target, and it will start rendering, and all your settings are saved. So as you get familiar with Octane Standalone, I think updating your default project is very helpful. For instance, if we click on render target and we go down to our kernel settings, don't worry, I will go over all this later. You can see it's set to direct lighting. Well, for me, I'm pretty much always going to want path tracing. So I want my default project to have path tracing. So I'm going to go ahead and go file, save as default. And the next time I open this project, it will already be set to path tracing. Okay, now that we have a basic scene set up, it'll be much easier for us to talk about the user interface and getting familiar with Octane Standalone. So this is obviously the 3D viewport. This down here is the node graph editor. This is really what you use to navigate your scene. You can use the scene outliner, but I think most people, myself included, end up using the node graph editor for everything. And then of course you have your node inspector. So depending on what node you have selected, you'll have different options over here. You also have a lot of buttons along here, along the side here. You can hover over any buttons to see what they do. And I think you should take some time to sort of memorize 
what each one of these icons means. Once you really think about it, like this, for instance, is the resolution settings. So when you when you think about, okay, this is up arrow, right arrow, it makes sense. Okay, this is the, the resolution settings here. And similar to this button over here, it does a similar thing as the, the film settings here. Time for animation, settings cog for the kernel settings. So take some time to, to really commit to memory what all these little icons do. It will make your life much, much easier. In the viewport, there are settings to navigate and there are also keyboard shortcuts that work. For most software, I would say learn the native shortcuts, learn the native navigation. But for 3D programs, I don't necessarily follow that rule. I think if you're mostly using Unreal and Octane, you should probably make Octane act like Unreal because you can't make Unreal act like Octane. If you're using Maya or Blender or whatever, I think you should find a set of settings that work for both programs as much as possible. And to do that, you can go up to File, Preferences, and then under Controls, you can change how you navigate, and under Keyboard Shortcuts, you can change some of the default keyboard shortcuts. Most 3D programs use Alt and Left Mouse to orbit, so that's what I've set mine to do. I've also set my camera move to middle. The default is, I think, right mouse button. So I've gone ahead and changed mine to middle, but you need to spend some time to figure out what's gonna make the most sense for you here. Same for keyboard shortcuts, say, show all commands. You can change what these do. And again, it's totally up to you what you want to do here. I prefer to do move, scale, rotate, just like Unreal. So I'm gonna change move, rotate, and scale to WER. The other one I like to change is these lock controls. I set this to F12, which is the equivalent of rendering in Blender. And what happens when you press the lock button, or for me, if I press F12, is it locks the user interface. So I can't, you can't see it, but I'm trying to zoom in and out. It won't let me zoom out. It won't let me pan or rotate. It won't let me do a lot of these other things that are going to stop this render. So this is one way that I can sort of make myself render this scene without accidentally moving. So this lock button is actually quite important for me and my workflow. So as we go through these videos and you learn what these different buttons do and how your workflow is going to be, you may want to update your keyboard shortcuts to match the shortcuts that are gonna make sense for you and your workflow. Okay, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.